It's Monday, April 13th, day after Easter. And as I posted a video at the end of last week referencing where I think the winners are going to be in after the COVID-19 pandemic begins to wane, but there are going to be many losers and they're in big categories. The first and overarching loser, I believe, the, the, this is geared to the average real estate investor. Uh, obviously, there are big categories like the cruise industry, which is getting crushed, but those aren't for the average investor. What I'm talking about are for the things, the, the assets that many, many real estate investors either own or have a share in a partnership that owns these assets. Number one on the hit parade of losers is all office space. It doesn't make any difference whether it's class A, B, C, D, it doesn't make any difference. All office space is a loser because of the speed of technology that has been effectively created by the need to physically distance ourselves from one another. Zoom was the go-to platform, went from 10 million users in December to 200 million users in March. And as the problems began to show uh, in that platform for security issues and other problems, Zoom immediately addressed them. They've already sent out two patches. They've got an entirely new uh, security algorithm being written for the platform, which will be available in 60 days. And it's a certainty the need for physically distancing ourselves will continue well beyond 60 days from now. How much of it is we do, doing, I'm not sure, but so many meetings will have been done between now and the end of June that people will be used to doing Zoom meetings. But Zoom's not alone. Uh, Skype, which I used to consider to be the Howard Johnsons of video platforms, it was first, but certainly never made any changes and was completely overtaken by platforms like Zoom, has now, in the last two weeks, made significant upgrades into its video servicing uh, and the platform where it offers many of the same features that Zoom now does. And more are coming. Facebook has now got Messenger uh, on desktop, which allows multiple people to be in videos at the same time, also for free. So the ability to have video chats and video conferencing will forever impact the office market. The uh, ability of people to work at a distance, as I've pointed out before, um, there, the, there is the Amazon second headquarters, which is uh, may still be being built on the East Coast, but whether it ever has the uh, population of people in the building is really unlikely. The corporate headquarters in Seattle is uh, definitely closed and nobody's been there for weeks. There are mortgage offices that used to have three and four hundred processors working in one building and now they're all working from home. Is there is a point where the inefficiency of working at different locations is weighed against the cost of owning an office building, the cost of leasing the space. And as technology begins to increase, especially with the rollout of 5G nationwide later this year, the ability to work away from a physical office building will only increase and the demand for office space is only going to decrease. The next real loser is everything that's related to the hotel industry. It's, it's definitely in the Knoxville market, and this is really going to be especially true in all markets. It won't make any difference where it, it is. But in all markets, the hotel industry is going to get just severely hammered and any business that is leasing space that supports the hotel industry is going to be significantly impacted. The I go back to video conferencing and the need to have business travelers on the road spending nights in different hotels as they're calling on clients will decrease 
There's just no question about it. The next thing, and it's good that people want to say they want to press the flesh, they want to be up close and personal, but having watched many meetings now on Zoom, your ability to see people, their body language, their interactions, the way in which they handle themselves uh, in conversations is getting better and better, and in some situations, far better than you could actually have in a meeting. So it becomes a, a situation now where there will be less business travelers and it's going to be at least a year, maybe two years before the consumer comes back. I'll get into that a little bit later. The third thing that uh, investors need to be careful about uh, is any investment involving uh, the urban core. Multifamily housing of all kinds is, is now getting to be very problematic. It doesn't make any difference whether it's a suburban office, a suburban uh, three-two split, garden apartments. It, it doesn't. It won't make any difference where the apartments are if you have a, a common stairwell uh, that people have to go up and down and hold the handrail, or common elevators that people have to get into to go to their apartment. There is going to be decreasing demand for those units for some period of time in the future. I'm not a germaphobe, and my son certainly is not a germaphobe, but he's uh, got two small children. And today we were having a conversation about just the things that we think about now that we didn't really used to think about because we're not so much worried about us, but we are certainly concerned about infecting someone else. One of, his, one of, our, one of my grandchildren, my wife, uh, his family, it's just, it just goes on and on. We are really being careful and you've got to think that people who live in buildings where they have to be touching things that other people touch that may be sick and there's no way to control who is sick and who's living and who's living in the building and who isn't because you know you don't get to pick your neighbors so it does wind up being a situation where everything involving the urban core and multifamily housing will have decreasing demand for sure uh, for the next year, maybe two years. I'm not saying it won't come back. I'm not saying that things won't get improved in 24 months, but it definitely is not going to be improved soon. And so all there is is pain in those particular sections. And the fourth is one that's really hard for most people to get a grip on because we just don't see it as normal investors on a regular basis, but it's farming. Here in East Tennessee, I don't drive by many farms, but when I visited my wife's relatives in Southern Indiana, they're everywhere. And farms in Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, all through the South, Florida, everywhere there is a farm. There is no labor. There are two, there's two sides to the problem. There is no demand because the restaurants are closed. The hotels are closed. Uh, there's no d demand on that side for the produce, but there's no labor to pick it, even if there were demand that could meet the growth of the vegetables and the fruits in this country. The farming industry is going through and what will could easily become the changing event for how farming is done and who owns farmland in this country forever. This is the kind of problem that will put multi-generational families out of the farming business. People have owned their family farms for a hundred years and are still depend on farming revenue are going to really struggle to figure out a way to survive. Because even if they can figure out how to get the sales to increase, they're going to miss an entire year's worth of crops in many, many cases. And there's almost no way to recover. And even if they do figure out how to get financial aid from the federal government, the ability to hire farmhands is going to be significantly reduced. It's really going to be a problem in the future. So these are the four losers that I've picked that are readily identifiable while we're still in the middle of physical distancing with the closure of all social gathering places. Social distancing is the short word. But we've got real things to think about 
as this closure, this distancing is causing an unbelievable economic uh, catastrophe in this country and other industrialized world, uh, other industrialized countries around the world. The, it doesn't make any difference where you are right now. The destruction of the economy is getting more pervasive every single day. And I'm going to talk about in the next video things that we as citizens who are used to doing business a certain way, things that we're going to have to look at permanently changing in the way that they work. We already know, and for a quick example, we already know uh, that there have been thousands and thousands of pages of FDA regulations that have been torn up to make uh, an effort to get medicines out faster. We know that there have been and there will be thousands of pages of environmental regulations that are going to have to be rewritten because of things that are going to be happening in this country in the future. And these are just some of the, the topics that I'll discuss in the next video. For sure, I am optimistic about where this country will go. I am extremely optimistic about the rebound the economy will have once we come up with a vaccine. But until then, investors have to be very careful about making decisions on what they think uh, is a good buy. Because the one thing is for sure, it's never a good idea to catch a, fall, a falling knife. And never, it is never a good idea to catch a falling knife. I thank you for watching the videos. If you think I am providing information that you find useful, please subscribe to the channel, like the videos, and recommend it to your friends. It is, uh, I do have a different voice than so many of the people that I see and hear providing information. So I really do appreciate the comments and I look forward to providing more information for you in the near future. Thank you very much.